one of my most harrowing experiences was when on a rice sack I was transported into the death hut uh, and there I found myself amongst others who were uh, in a bad condition. Fortunately for me, I had friends, two friends who came to see me and they made me realise that my end was near uh, and therefore it was necessary for me to try and do something about that and uh, I asked them to get, I asked them to go and get some bamboo, make me a backrest because I thought the way to be alive next morning would be to still be able to open my eyes and the way to do that was to sit up all night and that I did and fortunately I'm here today. What was the death hut? The death hut was a normally sized death and hut like the others in uh, uh, height, width uh, and uh, but would house only a few and I think it would be fair to say this death hut housed about 20. Most of them were just lying there and I didn't talk to them but the person on my right shoulder uh, did talk and uh, I uh, found out that his, what he wanted to talk about was his life uh, in England and uh, the parents that he had and also that the parents were people who kept a fish and chip shop and he told me how much he enjoyed fish and chips. And that was rather unfortunate for me because I was starving and uh, fish and chips would have been wonderful at that stage. Anyway, uh, at next morning when I woke up, I looked across at him and he was dead. And of course, the person on my right and left was dead too and all those around me were dead. No one else moved but me. When I woke up in the morning, every other prisoner in the death hut was dead. There was no movement, and I realised that how fortunate I was in being alive, and forever I've been grateful. People were brought into the death hut to make room for those that were in the hospital, and uh, uh, they, this decision had been made that there was no more you could do for them, so that they, they might as well be out of the hospital somewhere else. I was moved into the house because they, they thought I wouldn't live the, through the night and see the morning. Uh, Did you feel that way? I didn't realise I was that bad. Uh, and I didn't realise I was that bad until these two friends or m mates, weren't my friend, they were mates, mates came to see me. And it was through them that I realised that I was in a poor condition. I lost. When I lost weight, I saw my ribs, and the, when I was marched from one camp to the other, the backbone showed so much that I had a, where I carried my, my valise, I had a sore on my back. And I think, I haven't seen, but I, I think the scar is still there. How often would the Japanese feed you? We had the Japanese through our own kitchens and through our own staff uh, fed us three times a day. Uh, it would be a, a, a portion of rice as porridge in the morning, a portion of uh, rice, only rice, at lunchtime, and a portion of rice 
together with a portion of stewed vegetables uh, in the evening. Uh, with a little luck, you could have you had some ground salt that you could put with your rice at lunchtime, and a little salt you could put with your evening meal, and that helped it down. I can't think how I come by my ground salt, but I had some, which was of course precious. To keep myself going through the night and to keep my eyes open, I thought of home, I thought of the jobs I'd done, I, th I thought of the time I'd spent in the army in Britain, and uh, I thought of my parents and uh, the uh, school pals. <laughs>